it anyway. We'll have some people to read these parts for me, to read the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verse 22. And that one you can read it on until I tell you not to. But if you read it, keep that page so that you'll be, from time to time, be reminded to read again. I'm glad to see Irene. She's a very good friend of ours. She has visited us in the house. Irene, welcome to the church. Thank you so much. And your friend. Thank you. You can read chapter 23, 20, chapter 17, verse 22. You can read on, and someone will read Psalms 23. Another person should read Psalms 103. Then someone will read also, but this one's not so much of uh, what I want to talk about. Uh, Numbers, chapter 21, from verse 4 to 9. Then Second Kings, from... No, Second Kings is not important in this, in this sermon. So whoever got the Acts of the Apostles, you can start. Chapter 17, verse 22, you'll read on, and then I'll tell you where to stop. And the word of the Lord reads, Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill, and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by, and behold, your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore... Ye ignorantly worship. His declare I unto you, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things and has made of one blood all nations of men from to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. I think we'll have it up to there. It, we, Jesus Christ came into this world and find, uh, found, he came and found a lot of religious groups. You better say that. When Jesus came in, there were religion. So the church did not just start, the, the church of Jesus started itself when Jesus was, went into heaven. Amen. But before that, there were churches that were already in place. And this is the main reason why it is not easy to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior right now. Because when you have believed in the, like for example, for example the Buddha, they believe in their religion and they do it so well. So if Jesus comes and says, I am the way, it was not easy for them. And that's, that's one of the reasons why th when, when the man of God was walking in Athens, then he saw the God which was written, they said that unknown God. Mm. This unknown God was a, a big religion in that place and everybody was worshipping that unknown God. Mm. And Jesus was against such religion. And even when there are some, we have, we have so many groups of people in this world and even in this salvation time. In the, when I came, I found that there were some people who had the word of God and the word of God came, entered very well. Then as soon as the pestilence came, they just gave up. Then there are some people who got it and went with it and it, 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 I got the message when it was going. It was in Mark, Mark chapter 4. Yeah, verse 14. We have a category of people in this world. And these people, they know that God is there and they know that Jesus Christ is the Christ, is the Lord. But because of the, the religion that they have been with, Come on now. it is not easy for them to just... I always say that if you, if you, want, to, if you want God to get a job, 
if you are employed and you, or you want employment and you want to get a job, you want an employment because you are unemployed. So you want to be employed, rather. You must go. First of all, you have to qualify for that interview or maybe a test. Me, I was a nurse. I'm now retired, but I remember this. The stages I went before I could even become that nurse and be employed. You, there are so many stages that we used to go and, and then we must go to the Ministry of Health and we must write our name, register with the Kenya Medical Association, we have to register with the, with the, Medic, the Kenya Nurses Association, then we have to register with the, with the City Council, then we have to, there are a lot of registrations, then you are now told to go to your, to your station. When you reach your station, the head, the head nurse will tell you where to go from then. So I found out myself that I don't know if somebody could just go to that place. It was very far and we really, we really needed nurses over that place. There were shifters at that time and anybody who could come and help patients over there was welcome. We found NGOs were there and even those who were doing first aids were there. But as we were on payroll, whether we went to work or not, we had already reported in that, that place, it is volatile, but we were being paid. Because our names were written in the Ministry of Health. And that's why we were very proud to, to just tell the, the, the first aiders to continue while we sit. We can write, write some notes, and we tell them to go to the field. The shifters are rioters. Nowadays they call them Al-Shabaab. <laughs> These people change the names from time to time. So you see, before you write your name over there, you can't just come and start working without knowing whether you'll be paid or not. But if you work and you know that you'll not be paid, then don't cry later that I worked and why wasn't I paid? Because I know that in the, in the life of salvation, we know that this category of people, there is a group that are born again Christians and working hard for the work of Jesus Christ Amen. and building the church. Hallelujah. And there's another group also, born, sorry, born again Christians working for the Lord, but there is a bit of fle flexibility somewhere. Teach. Then there is a group who have moved from another church. If you have moved from Islam mm. to Catholic, then you are converted, you have become a Christian. There's a group like that. If you move from Catholic Church to a Pentecostal, more charismatic like ours here, then you are born again. You have now been converted to Christianity. So when you start explaining to her about salvation, they now don't, the other people know that this person is born again. Now what I would, I would, I would rather say, that if I want to live a comfortable life in Jesus, and if I want to encounter my life with Jesus Christ, it is simple but difficult to accept. To just answer the altar call, that is evangelical way of getting to know Jesus Christ is to, to have an encounter with Jesus Christ, to tell Jesus Christ, I love you, I want to confess my sins, you are my personal savior, you died for me, and I believe in you. Amen. That's very difficult to say. But it is very easy when you can say it, because the moment you say it, you have already crossed. Amen. So that's why I, t I tell believers and non-believers that it is not just good to go somewhere and find people working and you start. Well, well it is good you are there, and you are, they have already started. So find out how you can meet the leader of that group, of that place. Let us find out where is the owner of this, this field. I want to work, but I don't want to work before I know him. Amen. So the ones who are already there, they will take me forward and tell me that is there, the owner of this field. Go and talk to him. I will go there, convince him, tell him I'm so and so, I know this job, I want to do it, and I know that if I do it, you'll also be very happy. Then, the, then that person will say, okay, give me your names, then I'll write, then he'll write those, those names down and then you will tell me to come back to work. So we Christians, we have come to the church, we have been coming to this church, in every other churches, for a long, long, long time. But one step has made us not to be able to enter into the grace. When we want to pray, 
a man of God says, and he says that the Lord is my shepherd, I will not want. And he also emphasizes that he leads me. Besides, he leads me to the green. He leads me and makes me sit in the green green pastures. Then he also emphasizes that he he goes with me through the the still waters. So you can imagine how I go through the still waters. The waters are still. Maybe I would say that my waters are. I'm in jail, but I'm a born again Christian, but I've been jailed. Amen. Let me say um, I've been condemned for some reasons, but here now I'm in the water, and it is very everything is quiet. But my God, because I have already accepted my God to be my God, then now as I walk, He walks with me through these waters. The still waters are still, but for me, I find myself at rest. Then as I go. The man of God, the man who was saved by God all his years, he says, I'm walking in the, in the valley, through the valley of the shadow of death. He's actually walking through the valley of the shadow of death. You can imagine the valley of the shadow of death. This one is like a bush. When you are in a forest, soldiers they know what it means to be in a forest. They must wear a hat, a, a hat, a helmet, and they have to wear some very heavy clothes and high and boots so that when they walk, they cannot be hurt by any animal in that bush. So they have to cover themselves. And myself, because there is this supernatural being that is protecting me as I walk, it makes me get so excited. The man of God is so excited. All, all these things in the bush, all the animals and all the fighting and everything, I'm just going through. Then he says, surely my God. Then it means, journey, this, uh, the Lord's mercies of, of the Lord are upon my life all the days of my life. He was so amazed at this thing and said, surely, if God is like this, then I'm going to spend the rest of my, my life in, in, in the house of God. Because if this is where I can be, and he covers me, and he takes care of me, then I go and walk and reach over the other yonder without anything hurting me. Then I know that I must stay in the house of God forever. Amen. And now it means that if I walk in the house of God forever, then I will be free. Amen. Now, what about this other person? Who is also, we are in the same bush. He doesn't have a, a helmets. He doesn't have those clothes. The boots. Walking with, a, with a, a soldier next to him. The soldier is with boots, but himself he has nothing. What would happen? I know he will be beaten by uh, wasps, insects, maybe snakes, maybe anything. But the soldier who is well dressed and well covered is just going to go through. So for us, who must go to, who must go to the other yonder and reach because we want to reach and we want to reap the goodness of the of, of, of God in Canaan. We must reach there and and get that goodness. We must cover ourselves. We must be uh, covered by the grace of God. In in biology, we say that the grace of God, it it's like a cell. The body, the blood in the body. It's not just a, a thick, it's not just water. It is, there are, some, there are particles of red and white, and there are also so many other particles in it. But red and white are more prominent. They are just pieces and pieces and pieces, very many, until they form that cloth. But when you look at them, they are so good and they are, they are moving in one direction, but let, the, let there be a cut wound in that body. All the white blood cells will, will accumulate themselves, they will multiply faster, and they'll come back to where there is this wound so that they, there is no further infection in the body. They come and even they form pus. 
so that this infection does not infect the rest of the body. So when you sin and you are a believer, when you sin and you know that you are a believer, God's grace is more in that place because he knows that this is my beloved child. He has accepted that I'm going to take care of, of him. So now that there is a problem, I must be there. That's why I was saying that where, you are, where his grace is, that is where he is more. More of his grace is in that place. So if a believer sins, if you sin today and you are a believer, know that the grace of God is more on your life than if a, a, an unbeliever sins. So for me, I believe that it is good for us to go to the people as a church when we are here. It is even better for us to walk and to go to the people and take the church to them. Because they do not know God. They don't. Some of them, they say, I was in Holland last week and I was so surprised that somebody said, told us when we were praying all the time. <coughs> because as we had a prayer for family, and every time people came into that house, we stood and prayed. And we, every time we went to the house of my niece, we were praying and praying. So somebody said he, he didn't like that. So he wanted to go out every time we, do it, we did it. We did it. Such a person does not even know what's going on. And that is the person God wants you to go to. He wants you to go to that one who doesn't know. But for those ones who have come inside the church, it is only themselves to blame for not answering any altar call. You have come to the church. Surely your pastor is here. He has, she is always here. And she's there to pray for you. But a simple walking forward, answering that call of salvation has become very difficult. So we cannot say that we have not done it. But we have tried to bring you here and we are still trying and we're not going to give up because we must get you so that you come. Then we shall go over to that other person because without you, that person will remain not knowing what you even do here. That's what I'm saying, that my, my, my spirit tells me that if I have to go to this person who do not know God at all, at all, then I have to start with my house. Amen. I need people from my house. I need a car to go there. I need money. I need, I need a uh, calf bearer. We call them pole bearers. Somebody to carry for me the Bible. Amen. Like uh, our bearer. Like... Uh, Elisha. So you see, I can't just go alone to the neighbor's house and tell them God loves you. Some neighbors don't like it. Understand in the US you have to ask for permission and be given a, a paper so that whenever you go to houses, then you have something from the government which shows you can go to a house and just tell somebody about Jesus Christ. So it is not an easy thing. So we need each other. Amen. But we are not going to need each other if we have not been prayed for in salvation. Ellie El, was, was talking to, to Sam, Samuel. Because Ellie was always waking, Samuel was always waking up at night and saying that, Lord, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And until Ellie asked him, what is it? He could even go to sleep and be woken up again. Only the last time then Ellie realized that it is God calling someone. He has been in the house of God for long. He was born, he was given there as a gift because he was, you know, the story of someone. Then he was staying in the house of the Lord from a young child. He was taken there as weeding period, like this one's coming out, playing here. They were taken, to, he was taken to the church at a very early age. And he stayed there for long. And he was doing the work, putting everything for Ellie in, in, in place. But he was not aware of what was going on around him. Only when he was called, then he knew. So it is good for us to, be, to listen to the voice, the small, still voice of Jesus calling, come to me, come the way you are. I like when us in Pentecostal churches, people accuse us that we are born again, but we look, we look funny. My church in Africa is so full and the people say we look funny because we don't look like 
those Christians, we, our hair, our clothes, our we wear rings, things that they know is not there and they don't even believe, but the youth, they have known the, 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 the God of Israel that we preach because they also read from the Bible and they find it is true what we have said. That's why it is possible for us to even get the crowd to know Jesus Christ and to go with them along so that we can talk to those who are saying that they do not know God and they don't want God and they don't like God. Because somebody says, I don't like God and I, I don't know why this thing has happened to me. If God loved me, why did this thing happen to me? Wow. So it is good for us to know the strategies of what to do. When you go to many churches, you find that people must wear uniforms. Some youth, they don't like to go. Um, they, they are so tired with their school uniform in Africa that when they are still going again with uniforms elsewhere, then they would rather not go there. So you find that leave the informs alone, come the way you are, and we shall worship, and we shall pray for you, and we shall guide you, and who knows, you could be the one who will now guide us. Because uh, we are going away. But we need you people. We need young people to come forward. The most important thing that we should do is to come forward, be prayed for, and find out how we can go to that person, because he is there. And God wants us to go there. But so far, he's not, he's not going to know anything because we have not gone there. They are waiting. If it is a family, they are waiting. If it is a son, if it is a drug addict, somewhere is waiting. If it is a drunkard, somewhere is waiting. If it is a, somebody who is always fighting a robber, he's really waiting. Because when are you going to go there? Because we are here, we are supposed to be going there. We are supposed to take the church out to them. And they are supposed to come to hear what we are preaching. Because sometimes they may not even hear it. Now when we say that someone, someone is, someone is coming on. The, the people say me when I got born again, there was this, uh, this lady, I didn't like her very much. She's called Mama Lide. She, she used to come to my house. There's a time a pilot died. He went. My husband used to work with the Air Force. So there was death. A pilot did something up there, then he, he, he had an accident with his aircraft and he died. So this lady came to me because she has been seeing me going to the church. Then she came to me and told me, Mrs. Owino, you know, uh, Captain so and so died and uh, the brethren are going to, to pray and we would like you to join us. I did not, I usually don't like her very much, that lady, but I, I, didn't, I didn't want to tell her that I have nothing to do with those things. So I just told her, how much money do you need? She said, no, I didn't come for the money, my sister. I just want you to come so that we can go and pray with them together and see if we can. Then I quickly went to my bedroom. I removed the 20 shillings not and I gave it to her. I told her, well, I'll see, but for now you can go and take that one. You know, if you're not born again, you need people with a heart. So that person who do not know God and does not want God, can't just go to him like that. There are ways of going to places. We need so much of our group to go and pray and engulf such a spirit so that they can agree. If myself, I was a church goer, but when somebody told me about, she didn't even tell me to get saved. She only invited